Hello and welcome to Service Side Programming with PHP and MySQL. I'm Jeff LaBeouf and in this video we will begin our first project creating an email application. A couple of things I'd like to um, say at the outset is that I will not be using CSS in this tutorial. Um, the reason for that is I want to keep things simple. I want to make the scripts nice and clear um, and not confuse anyone too much so uh, there will not be any CSS in these tutorials however you um, hopefully can extrapolate what I've shown here and add your own CSS styling uh, on your own uh, secondly in this first project the email news the email uh, application will not contain any validation so that means our forms will not be validated before they communicate with our database now this is pretty dangerous. You wouldn't really want to set up um, an application that does th that uh, communicates with the database without validation. But this tutorial is meant to provide a basic, uh, some basic building blocks for programming with PHP and MySQL. So this first tutorial will be simple, uh, and that is on purpose. In the next series, we will expand on this concept and actually add in the validation. So um, that is the reason why there's no validation in this one. If you expect to see it, it will be in the second series. Let's begin by reviewing the finished product. So I have my email newsletter, and there are three links on this page. Sign up to receive my email newsletter, compose email, and remove an email. These are the three basic functions of our application. There's no member system in front of this, so uh, anyone can get to these links here. Uh, potentially users or admins so I've simply divided it by these headings but uh, putting a member system in front of an application like this would be extremely important so first let's click sign up so that we can receive our email newsletter we press sign up we receive verification that we've entered um, this information and that it's been successfully added to the mailing list if I return I can choose compose email so if I was a site admin I would compose an email I can type in the subject the first issue Here's my first message. Send. Okay, so when I press send here, I receive some confirmation that I've successfully emailed my message and I've programmed this to send a response to us just verifying who we've sent this email to. And you can see there's a, a number of users that I've added into the database already. Uh, just for testing purposes and I've got confirmation that they've all received my message and I can see dear Jeff LaBeouf, dear Jeff LaBeouf, dear Helium Carbon so that's the username and there's the first message oh, I can also see who it was from and the subject which is my first issue finally let's remove an email so if I want to remove or opt out of this service, I can just simply type in the email that I would like to remove. Email at email.com. Remove. And I get confirmation that I have successfully removed email at email.com from the mailing list. Okay. Now that that's done, let's jump over to Dreamweaver and look at the HTML code for my site. So my files are defined over here in my files menu I have a list of all the files for my site and I just have one root folder with everything inside of it so again this is a very basic setup we have our HTML files right here there's the index sign up compose and remove and then you can see the corresponding PHP uh, scripts so for index.html simply our home page with our links we have a standard skeleton so we have the HTML5 doc type, 
the HTML tag, open and close, or start and end, the head and the body. Inside the head we have a title, we have a, some metadata, both which are set, and then uh, title, my news. And again, that's the title appears in the tab. So here you can see my news up top. Uh, it does not appear in the body of our web page. The body is within inside the body tag. And I have my main heading, which is my email newsletter, wrapped in an H1, and then a horizontal rule. <coughs> and I've used unordered lists for my links. So the first UL has only one list item, and that is a link. So I've got the sign up to receive my email newsletter wrapped inside an A tag with the um, the hyperlink reference signup.html. I have the list item and then finally the UL, the unordered list. Then under site admin we have another UL with two more links. Compose email, that's going to the compose.html and then remove an email which goes to the remove.html. Let's look at sign up next. Under sign up I have a standard skeleton again with head and body. Click head, there's just a title up here for sign up. Under body we have our H1 heading, a horizontal rule, some instructions, and a paragraph tag, P, and then we have a form. So a form begins with a form tag, which is two-sided. We open it and then we close it at the end of our form. And inside our form we have labels and inputs. The attributes in our form tag are action and method. These are important for a form. Action is where we're sending our information. So the value for action is signup.php. When we submit this form, it actually sends the information from these fields to signup.php. A method is post, and there are two methods you can use. You can use post or get. We're going to use post in this example. Now our first line in our form has a label, first name, which is here we've used the label tag, and the content is first name. So the label tag is two-sided. There's a for attribute which defines what this label is for. So we're just adding semantic value. So we have a field right next to it and that label goes, it corresponds to that field. So the field is the input tag and the input tag is an empty tag. There's no uh, content inside of it. It does not have a start and, a, and an end um, tag. It's just an empty tag on one sided. So you can see the little slash that normally closes it is on the right hand side of that tag. I've um, returned and tabbed to make the attributes a little clearer to see. We have three attributes in here. We have the name attribute, the ID, and the type. The name attribute is important because when the information is sent to our script, it will be the information in this field, the values in this field, will be sent with the prefix name. The ID allows the label and the input to actually um, sync. So the for, what the, inf the value that's in the for attribute corresponds with the ID. And then the type defines what kind of input field this is. So this is just a text input field. And there's lots of different types. There's uh, text, there's password, there's um, there's check boxes, um, radio boxes, and there's some new ones in HTML5 that are pretty neat, like sliders. Okay, for the next two lines, we have last name and email, and those follow the same syntax. So I've collapsed them, but you can see that they have this. There's no mystery here. We have a label for last name with the four attribute. And then the input field is name, ID, and type. We have last name, last name, and text. And email is another. There's more repetition there. The final input field is the submit button. 
So the submit button is just like any other input field except the type is of submit rather than text. We also have a new attribute here called value. So the value is that information that's printed on the button there, submit. If I wanted to change this to something else, like hello, that's what will print on the button. So that covers our sign up form. Let's take a look at compose.html. Again, we have a skeleton, we have a head and a body. Let's expand the head. We have a one meta tag and then title compose. If we open the body, we have our heading, which is compose with an HR. Write your newsletter below, there are our instructions, and a form. And this form is a little different because we have our label and text input, but then below that we have the body label followed by a, um, a different kind of input field. This is a text area that allows us to do multi-line type. So line 15, if I expand that, we can see the information for the subject field, and that's similar to what we saw on the last page, where we have a label with the for attribute the input with name, ID, and type attributes. Now here we have label for body, and that's the information, that's the words here on screen, body. And then we have a text area. And the text area is a, um, a, a normal tag with content in the middle. I don't have any content displayed in, on screen. Um, but we could actually type some information there. So if I put hello like that, save this and preview it. We can actually see the word hello printed there. And the reason why we have that space is because of the tab that I have down here. So if I remove that, save it. Refresh this page. Now the uh, there is no information in this in this text area to begin with. If you notice I have a tooltip which says type your message here. Created that with an attribute called title. So let's look at the attributes for text area. In the start tag for text area I have name and ID and again, the name is because that information will be passed to my my compose.php script. So that's just my action for this form. The ID corresponds with the label. The rows and columns is simply sizing information. So I wanted to specify a, a specific size that kind of felt like a window big enough to type um, an email message. The title tag is that tooltip. So, I'm sorry, it's not a title tag. The title tag is up here in the head. So I apologize for that. It's easy to get those mixed up. This is a title attribute. So a title attribute can be used within a, an ordinary tag that's in the body of your, your web page, and it will display a tooltip. Okay, and then finally we have another submit button. And the value for this, the, the value for the value attribute is send email. You can see that actually displays both words here. Send email. Okay, one last page to review, which is the remove uh, form. So we have our head, which has the title of admin. Let's just change that to remove. There we go. Now that, again, does not change the heading because the heading is in the body. I simply change the title. If I preview this in Internet Explorer, I can see that it still says admin there, but the tab shows remove email. Now we can get into the body and we'll change this information to remove email. 
There we go. Remove an email from the mailing list. It's our instructions, and we have a form. And again, with action and method, the action is remove.php, which is our script, and the method is post. We have a remove button or a submit button with the value of remove. And a simple label and input field for email and then the form field. That concludes our first video in the series Creating a Web Application. Thank you.